morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me as we take a look, a first look, at least detailed look. I did talk about the storm quite a bit yesterday, but at our February 3rd through February 4th storm, which is going to be a high impact event here across southern Vermont. Um, and unfortunately, once again, the weather has been uh, not cooperating in terms of being easy to forecast lately. And this storm um, is going to be very complicated as well because there's going to be a very tight transition uh, that's going to set up between snow, sleet, freezing rain, and rain. And that transition looks to set up at least initially um, over and for the bulk of the significant precipitation over uh, southern Vermont, which is going to make this quite complicated. Um, and the models, as is normal, are not entirely in agreement about this, which is not unusual at all. But um, what is always complicated is when you're in one of those transition zones. We were in it for the storm last week. For a very different reason, we're in it this week. So let's take a look at what's going to happen and try to figure out um, where what preparations and things like that we should be taking. First of all, let's take a look at satellite imagery. So first of all, here's a piece of our storm, which is starting to, um, uh, which is not really the initial, the real storm. That's basically out here. But this storm is starting to pump some moisture um, in across the southeastern Gulf, and you can't really see it on satellite here, but it is moving moisture in this direction and warming temperatures up here um, as we were cold all the way into Florida yesterday. But um, what's happening is we're recovering quickly across the southeast, and we will do that across the northeast um, really today. I know that's hard to believe. We started off really cold, but we actually are warming up here across the northeastern United States. Proof of that comes um, somewhat in the temperatures. We have a, a significant temperature inversion, again, that's been very common here lately. I had 10 below zero or 11 below zero at my house this morning. Um, as of the time of this map, this is about 5.30 in the morning when I uh, grabbed this off of uh, Weather Underground. Um, we were a few degrees below zero in a lot of the valley locations. Um, but then at elevation, as you head up the spine of the Green Mountains, we're 10 to 15 degrees. Um, that's a 25 uh, 10 to, to a 20 to 25 degree temperature inversion that we've got going on, um, which does show that at least the loft we're starting to warm up and throughout the day today will be warmer today than we were yesterday. Tomorrow we should be above freezing for most of us, except for the tall, the hot, the ski areas, um, who will be about freezing tomorrow uh, for the first time in almost a month. Um, and then the question, and then so we are warming up, and then the question is exactly where does the boundary layer set up between where we're snow and freezing rain and sleet and all those kinds of things. So let's try to take a look at um, also you can see here's just one more look at the lower levels of the atmosphere. You can see this is that um, you can see that we're, the winds have turned to the south and the southwest um, just to our west and as this area of high pressure starts to slide offshore we are going to become getting this flow and it is going to warm us up um, in the lower levels of the atmosphere and well like I said we'll be warmer than we've been in about a month um, at least tomorrow and then, uh, we'll, uh, then we'll have to see what happens on Thursday and Friday. Certainly this area, there's a big area of high pressure across Canada that's going to try to push down across us. And the boundary layer is where all the fun precipitation is going to happen. And we are on the boundary layer. So let's take a look at kind of what I think storm ev ev evolution is going to look like. Although the line where this is happening could move. Although this is my best estimate at the, at the time. So I think Thursday midday, we start off in Thursday's uh, precipitation is relatively light. Um, so this will be impactful if you're in the snow area, but not hugely impactful. And I think we'll start off mostly as either rain or snow. Um, there could be some sleet kind of mixed in right along the boundary layer, but I think mostly we're either rain or snow to start. And there'll be kind of light showers and mist um, and light snow and uh, to the north of this line. And I think the line starts off initially uh, basically almost just north of us here in southern Vermont, although potentially um, including, uh, could be areas that could start as snow would be Rutland um, and far northwestern Rutland County, I think, would be would be spots that could. Um, like I said, this line could move south or north, um, and that's obviously the complicated part of this forecast. But here's where I think it'll set up to start. Now, uh, as we head into Thursday, whoops, sorry. Hit the wrong button there. As we head into Thursday overnight into Friday, this is when the heaviest precipitation comes through. This is when the real issues start to set up. I think most of Windsor, and, uh, basically all of Rutland County and most of Windsor County, particularly uh, the northern two thirds of Windham, or Windsor County, will be snow for the bulk of the precipitation. And in areas where you see mostly snow, and like I said, this could move south, we're talking a dumping of snow, potentially 10 to 15 inches maybe. Um, uh, not ready to put it on a snowfall map, but that's the kind of snow totals we're looking at out of this storm. Definitely possible. Looking at almost two inches of liquid equivalent by the end, or inch and a half at least, of liquid equivalent, um, which again gives you uh, two inches would give you maybe 20 inches of snow because uh, it'll be pretty dense snow. But I don't think that's gonna. I don't think we're gonna get there. But anyways. A significant snowstorm for those areas. Then we get into this transition zone, which I think right now will set up mostly in Bennington and uh, Wyndham counties. So if you're in those areas, you need to be aware, particularly because that's actually going to be where the worst. Uh, 
effects are possible. Now the area of transition that's sleet, that will be annoying. Sleet is very annoying to move, but it is uh, basically not that different from snow in that uh, travel-wise it causes problems just like snow does, but it doesn't accumulate on trees or things like that. That area is of some concern, um, just in terms of travel will be tough, and that's probably basically true for everybody on, on Friday morning. But it's this area of freezing rain, which doesn't look as significant as it was looking yesterday. And I'm getting a little less concerned about it, but I'm still concerned that there will be a narrow, it's a very narrow area of freezing rain that sets up. Um, and it could be anywhere basically in Bennington and Wyndham counties, I think you gotta be prepared for this, that some, of the, some area there could see significant icing, maybe even up to a quarter to a half inch of ice. That's plenty of ice to start to cause some power issues. I don't think it's gonna be, yesterday it was looking even worse than that. So thankfully, I think, I think this threat has, I think the transition zone has narrowed some. So I think it's not gonna be widespread, but we should be prepared for that. And then by the time we had, you know, we can hit the right buttons here. By the time we had Friday midday, we're starting to let off on precipitation. Although notice this is, uh, we're talking almost a 36 hour event here by the time we're done. Uh, everybody's turned to snow except for uh, basically south of Vermont. So uh, we'll probably all get an inch or two of snow on the backside as things start to pull away. My, uh, my in indication though is that the line moves slower than we'd probably think it would. Okay, so let's try to break this down into knowns and unknowns. First of all, lots of moisture with the storm. I think everybody sees a liquid equivalent of precipitation of an inch to an inch and a half, which is a lot. Um, again, if that's all snow, that's 10 to 15 inches of snow probably. Um, in a storm like this, can be more if it's a fluffier storm, but this wouldn't be fluffy snow. Although, I don't think it's going to be the kind of sticky snow that causes power outages. Um, and if, it's, if, if a lot of that falls as freezing rain, that it could be ice accumulations of, like I said, uh, if, if the bulk of it fall that way as an quarter of an inch to half inch, maybe even a little bit more. And that's uh, you get above a third of an inch and you start to really have some issues with, uh, roads will be terrible under those circumstances. And also you start to have some issues with power lines. So that um, that's where we're concerned mostly. Uh, starts light, late Thursday, the most, uh, it's the heaviest is precipitation comes Friday, Thursday overnight. Precipitation will transition from rain to freezing rain to sleet to snow from north to south. Travel will be tough for Rutland and Windsor counties. Thursday afternoon. I think the rest of us might be just some light showers. So I don't think travel gets too tough for Wyndham and Bennington counties until probably overnight Thursday or maybe Thursday late evening. And then travel will be tough for Bennington, when, uh, for everybody basically uh, included on Friday. So travel will be tough no matter where you're going. Uh, in terms of, oops, you know, we're gonna get the current thoughts. So here's sort of my interpretations, especially based on what I've seen out of a storm like this in the past. The initial transition line will not move that quickly. So where it sets up, not necessarily where it sets up Thursday afternoon, but when the precipitation starts to pick up in intensity by Thursday evening, uh, wherever that line sets up, it's likely to stay longer than we would think it would. So that's where the problem's gonna be. So if Thursday evening you're getting snow, you're probably snow, we're almost certainly snow the whole time. If you're getting freezing rain then though, that's the that's time to start being concerned um, and start making any final preparations you need to do. There will be a tra sharp transition for accumulating snow totals, 10 plus, like I said, in places they can only snow and only an inch or two as the line moves through for most of the rest of us. Freezing rain is looking less problematic. I don't think it's gonna be widespread, but there could be a narrow area where that is a problem for you. And if that happens to be you, and I don't think we can pinpoint that yet with any accuracy, you need to be, you need to be making preparations. So that kind of means more of us need to make preparations. The Connecticut River Valley locations south of Windsor are probably at the greatest extent. So if you're in a place like Springfield, Bellows Falls, um, Brattleboro, any of those locations, a little bit west of those locations. If you're watching me from southern New Hampshire, a little bit east of those locations, I think that's where the most the most likely spot for significant icing is to uh, occur. You also the Champlain Valley, um, particularly south of like Manchester down to uh, Bennington, potentially problematic. But um, I wouldn't lock those locations in. Those are just probably the places to watch out for the most. While power outages will not be widespread, there could be a few communities that get hit pretty hard. So you want to be prepared to lose power because I think somebody will lose power for a decent amount of time based on this storm, unfortunately. Uh, finally, preparations to make. So I think here's what you can be doing to get prepared for the storm. For Rutland and Windsor counties, just be prepared for significant snow. You know, do the things you normally do. Be ready to drive in the snow. Uh, be ready to get rid of the snow, um, get it shoveled or plowed. But you really, you know, we're used to that here in Vermont. For Bennington and Wyndham counties, I think everybody should be prepared for the possibility of losing power for a day or two. I don't think that's gonna happen for most of us, but I think we should be prepared for it because for a few of us that could happen and it's better to be prepared for that. So if you've got a generator, make sure you got gas ready for it, things like that. Also, um, if you don't have a generator, make sure you've got some plans for what you're gonna do in case, you know, setting aside water and things like that if you're on well water, good things to do for if you're in one of those locations. Most people in Bennington and Wyndham counties will not lose power for that long. And a lot of us won't even lose it at all because I fit in this category. 
Be prepared for no school on Friday. I think that's pretty much a guarantee for everybody. And in Rutland and Windsor counties, be prepared for an early release potentially on Thursday as well. So this will impact school scheduling finally. So um, I will be back tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have some more details ironed out for our forecast. I want to uh, encourage you to subscribe to my videos if you haven't before so you make sure you don't miss my video tomorrow or any of my videos. And then uh, I would also encourage you, uh, then give a, I want to give a shout out and thank my patrons who help support what I do here and uh, financially and have helped me improve my graphics and things like that over the last uh, couple of years as, uh, as some of them have been supporting me that long. And also a bunch of my new patrons who've also jumped in recently. Thank you. And if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description below that explains what you get as benefits for being a patron and also um, how to become a patron. All right. I'll be back tomorrow morning with an updated look at the storm.